Let's get our Bibles in hand. This is going to be one of those wonderful 10-minute messages that, by God's grace, will change your life forever, because I know you're talking sliders and pumpkin pie, and, and all of a sudden, if I'm not careful, I'm going to start hearing the keys, the uh, car keys start to rattle, you know. How, so, but Father, thank you for opening our heart, and thank you for allowing us to experience something of you in such a way, Lord, it would change our lives forever, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, naturally, it's Thanksgiving this week, and we call it our Slider Sunday, sliding into that Thanksgiving season of ours. But I want to address today's message is grow in a grateful heart, grow in a grateful heart, and turning a negative to a positive. We want to take a look at, because one of the things I have found, and it was interesting early on, when we pastored, Ainsley and I pastored a church in Banning, California that we had a visitor, a young man, who owned a, tr- a equipment rental company. His family owned that. And he showed up in hysteria, and a little bit of uh, just fear gripped his heart. And he said, Pastor Paul, I know you. And I was on a job site in the water truck, big water truck, ready to spray another round on the dirt for the graders. And I'm sitting in my truck. And I know that something came over me that I was so filled with gratitude for my marriage and for my child, but I had no one to thank. Isn't that an interesting thought? No one to thank. Is there a God out there to thank? Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about that. God, sometimes if you're out there, can't you see the despair that I'm in? This person said, I'm so happy with my life. But I don't have anybody that I would want to thank. Where is God? And naturally, it was very easy for me to say, let me introduce you to Jesus. And he accepted the Lord. It was wonderful and very powerful. And a visitation of God's spirit upon him in that water truck because six months later, I was doing his funeral. He was heavy equipment driving down the 60 in Moreno Valley. And his big truck had a front tire blow and he crossed over into the other lanes, head-on collision, and perished. But we thank God he had an outstanding six months. And it's kind of like that thief on the cross. He has no track record of anything really good, only that, God, can you remember me when I come into your kingdom? And many of us may be considering those things as well. It's like this is a great season to grow our heart of gratitude. And thanksgiving, by definition, really is an awareness that you've received something you didn't deserve. An awareness, and scripture, it's awareness that I've received grace, favor, that I've received something that I know it was nothing of my doing, but man, it sure feels good. We love it when we go into our apartment or maybe our home that we have, and it's like, this is the home God's provided. This is the family God has given me. Those are great seasons. Sometimes we lose that, and it, we lose it just so simply. How about it? I mean, there's been times I'm in a hurry, and how is it that I get right behind the slowest driver in the entire street? It's like, what is going on? And I just lose, it seems like I'm losing my Christianity as being just shriveled up. I'm, I got a home project going on, and I'm all excited about it, but because of missteps, I'm making my eighth trip to Home Depot to buy more parts. Like, what is going on? This should be a much easier life for me. Or you go through the marketplace, and you realize, what is happening with the market prices going on, and just pressures happening, and people just get squeezed out of gratitude. They start to become complainers. This is one of those seasons, it's such a gift that God has provided. There's boatloads of scripture that talk about, hey, remember to give me thanks. Why? Because it engages who God is and takes us off of our circumstances. Let's take a look here at our notes. We'll go through, and I hope that you have your bulletin card. You can see it very clearly. Maybe take something down and go through those discussion questions Possibly, who knows, later on in the week. But we look here, number one, gratitude is God's will for your life. I've had people say, Pastor Paul, my life's in shambles. If I only knew what God's will is, I would do it. Really? I say, really? Are you sure? And then I turn to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. 
Check it out with me. New Living Translations. Whatever translations you've got at home, you go ahead, but mark that down, would you please? It says here, be thankful in all circumstances. Everybody see that? All circumstances. Everybody see that? Be thankful in all circumstances. Now look at the word in. In those circumstances. Now it doesn't say for. Be thankful for. Now, don't get that wrong because that'll be a game changer for you. I have things I am not very thankful for. I do not like it. I'm not appreciating what God has permitted. I believe he's all powerful. Why? I, he knows my heart. I might as well be transparent. I am not thankful for. And then all of a sudden you see the word in. So we see here, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So I'm just now, I'm bringing this up to Christians. If you're kind of determining where God's going to fit in your life, I'm glad you're here. It's not an accident you're here. But it's important that you get a chance. This is for believers because sometimes we could be behind that slow driver and say, what is going on? My life has to go places and it seems to be going nowhere. Be thankful in all circumstances. So it's important for us, and I'm going to just say how I do that is there's seven things I've come to basically confess because of my relationship with Jesus. And if you don't have that relationship, you're going to find it very difficult to become thankful in circumstances that are not very favorable. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. That's got to be going on. One of them is in the midst of whatever I'm going in, I'm thankful God is always good. I, Lord, you're always good. Not kind of, not sh- kind of shallow. You're always good. And God, you're always faithful. That's two. You are always faithful. I'm thanking you now. And God, you always love me. I want to thank you for that third one. God, you always love me. It's not up to my performance. It's worth thanking God. And that God always works with my best in mind. I believe that. He always does. Now, I'm telling you these things because I've experienced this stuff. But when I go through the crud, I don't feel like I can remember any of that stuff. That's why Thanksgiving is all about God. Connects you and me to God again. The fifth is that I just know that God has provided all my needs. I know that. I have not lacked for anything. There's some wants I want out there, but hey, God, you always, and I mean that, always. Why would I stress? We're talking about stress. I was going to rename this one of those, but hey, we'll get back to that next week. And that God always works out the details of my life for his good purpose. We could say, well, Lord, let let your glory come on this, but I know you always work out my life situations for your good purpose. And I can guarantee it, Lord, I want to thank you. You always reward obedience. Always. Always. Don't ever back off from obeying what you know God wants you to do. It's even those little things. Those are the seven. Those are the seven. Lord, you are always good. Lord, you're always faithful. I don't feel real right now, but you're always faithful. And you always love me. And you always work with my best in mind. Lord, you always provide for my needs. And I know what I'm going through, and I hope you could see it, Because sometimes we can't because the latest issues keep us back from all the benefits of the past. You always work through things in my life for your good purpose, Lord. And I like that. That makes me happy. And that, Lord, I'm going to hold true to being obedient. I'm going to be obedient. Because you always reward obedience. So when we take a look at this, check out with me Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 says this, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. 
I think if there's a lack of peace in any of our hearts, something needs a little bit of an adjustment. People that are not at peace are very disruptive to the environment in your home. But check it out and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in what? Yeah. That's my calling. I'm called to live in peace. Now, I'm not called to check out of this society, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of chaos going on. Make sure you don't bring it home. You're called to be that peacemaker. May you be the transformational element in that setting. And then see this last four words, and always be thankful. Let's say that together, and always be thankful. One more time, and always be thankful. Now, turn to somebody. You know they need this. Just tell them, and always be thankful. Go ahead, exchange it with somebody. And always. Now, always is an ongoing, continuous activity, always. And always be thankful. So it's going to be important when we get a chance because God is always good. God is always faithful. God always loves you and me. Oh, man. That's why when I lose bearings, I'm going to go back. How can I always be thankful? Well, it always focuses in on God. It connects you and me to God again. If you are unconnected with God because life gets busy, Goals need to be set. Accomplishments needs to happen. That somehow God's cut from that, and we start to lose that peace. Be careful. I like Psalm 106, verse 1. It says this, Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Don't you just love that? I believe it. I have witnessed it. I believe you have witnessed it. It's worth thanking the Lord for. All the things out there, and maybe just some of those lacks that we all have, it's important. So get to know God. Get to know the Lord. That would be great. Where you start to say, out of my relationship, it doesn't, it's not predicated on my circumstances, but it's in the Lord. Let's take a look at number two. Gratitude is a choice, not an emotion. It really is a choice. So I have Psalm 50, verse 14, which says, Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God, and keep the vows you made to the Most High. So that's a choice. Make thankfulness your sacrifice. That really is a choice. It's kind of like Monday. I'd rather watch Hallmark Christmas movies with Ainsley. Ooh. (laughs) Then Monday night football, ooh, don't do it, don't do it. That's a choice. That's important to know and make a choice to thank God. So when we take a look at something as significant as making a sacrifice, some of you may not have come in with any financial gift to God. Some of you, we heard some testimonies, Give God service. You'll be so blessed. I would just say start with giving thanksgiving to God. Get alone. Say, Lord, you always come through. It has nothing to do with what I have and don't have. It's going to be important. It will be a breakthrough. And you will start to become the person everybody wants to start hanging out with. I'm telling you. Number three, gratitude makes us a witness to others. That's important. I like Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. When you are a thankful person and you offer your appreciation for somebody, they want you around. They'll be inviting you back. But let's see what Philippians chapter 2, 14 says. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Well, that's why I'm talking to my neighbors, (laughs) getting them saved. But I'm telling you, it's going to be important. Check it out. It says, do everything without complaining. I think if there's anything 
that will put a black mark on Christianity, it is Christians who complain. I want to say that. I've witnessed it. I've seen that. It does more damage to advance the kingdom of God when Christians complain than anything else I've seen. Just think that through with me. Maybe you've seen that. Maybe you just have been one big family unit where everybody has a complaint. So it's natural. But somebody's going to say, man, we're going to be a witness about Jesus, and that's what they do? No, thank you. So to be thankful is so attractive and pleasing. So let me just highlight here. Letter A, you can see that when we complain, we damage our witness to the world. I've just bullet pointed in case people say, yeah, just what's the big deal? Complaining doesn't care about people. Complaining tears people down. Second bullet point, complaining is self-centered. It's all about how I feel. That's what complaining does. That's why it's so destructive. Number three, or point three, complaining doesn't want to help correct the problem. Just wants to isolate it, bring it up. People didn't know we had a problem until somebody complained. Bullet point four, complaining always lays blame on others for the problem, fault finders. And then finally, look at that last point, complaining never sees God in the circumstances. Hopeless attitude. And that's a very difficult one for Christians, you and me, to work with people. I can't see God. I don't know if he's there. Because they're so filled with discomfort for themselves, they can't help but complain. But thanksgiving breaks us free. It's amazing. We go back to what God is able to do, and it's wonderful. So fourth point, gratitude affects what we experience with God. Gratitude affects. If you are looking for that breakthrough, then you make sure that word always give thanks. You make sure that that's a part of your daily setting in prayer. You thank the Lord. It is amazing how we can see things that we didn't see before. Because as the word of God so often says, we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. There's something really there. There's something really there. When we start to thank God, because that's the connection. That's where it's at. But complaining will rob you. Complaining will rip your witness. Complaining will isolate others from wanting to be like you. And let's make Jesus very, very effective, shall we? Well, I want to take this opportunity then. Let me just pray with you, shall we? Just for a moment. Maybe you're here right now. And the occasion we have to just thank the Lord is just so rich and wonderful. And I thank God that you're even here. It's such a, such a miracle and a privilege. But maybe you're here and you're joining us even on live stream. And you just know that there's been things that have not been going well. And it has blinded you how really, really gracious God's been. But today would be the time we turn our lives back to him. We need a relationship you can't really be thankful if we don't know him. And let me lead you in a prayer. And I want to invite all of you, especially you who are online with us. Let me lead you in a prayer, a prayer of surrender and dedication of your life once again. It goes like this, dear Jesus. Let's say that again. Dear Jesus, I believe you that you promised good for my life. And I want to change my life. My life from all the negative I've given, the sin I've involved myself with. I believe that you died on the cross and rose to life for me. So now, dear Jesus, I invite you, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I'm going to surrender my life for the sake that you would save my family and friends. Use me now to influence others. You've done so good for me. And now I want to give back to you my life to use for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 
want to thank you. I want to ask you, if you've prayed that prayer with us right now, you at home or maybe a break room, please let us know. Please email us. You who are here in the room, maybe with our eyes closed, I don't know, but I think it takes quite courage to just say, you know what, when I just prayed that prayer, I meant it. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or rededicated your life to Jesus, would you just raise your hand and say, that was me. I gave my life to the Lord. Surrender it. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else want to just say, you know what? I know I just need to give my life to God. It's the only way to go. And I'll tell you something powerful when we acknowledge that. We don't have anybody come forward, but I'm telling you, it's something significant. This holiday, this Thursday, when you gather with friends, maybe by yourself, you get a chance. You tell them, you know what? This Sunday I was in church, and I prayed to receive Jesus as my Savior. I'll tell you, people may really understand what you just said, and they'll be so impressed. But I want to just even pray for you, because many times we don't want to tell anybody we're going to church or even a Christian, because you and I know people watch us a little closer, don't they? So in case we really bumble it, we don't want them to know we're, we're just like a sinner like everybody else. But people need you. People need you. We don't have much time left. People need you. Hey, people need you in their life, and they need to know the Jesus that you have. I want to thank you for joining us today at Hope Chapel Huntington Beach. It's our desire to bring the teachings of this church to others globally. If today's message has brought you closer to Jesus, we want to know. Can you send us an email to office at hopechapelhb.org? Would you consider supporting this ministry financially? You can give securely online at hopechapelhb.org slash give. If a check is your preferred method, you can send a mailed check to Hope Chapel. P.O. Box 548, Huntington Beach, California, 92648. If you want to be contacted by Hope Chapel, would you consider subscribing to our weekly newsletters at hopechapelhb.org slash subscribe. Whatever season of life you're in, we want to go through it with you. We want to thank you once again for joining us, and God bless you.